All right, welcome everyone to today's episode of the Messiah Hour here on IsraelSportsAndNewsRadio.com. We're very excited to have you with us. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can, of course can email me, MessiahHour at gmail.com, and the show on YouTube is known as the Messiah Hour. Type in the Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis, and you'll find out a bunch of different videos, different shows we've done. And, of course, we're going to do a little election wrap-up. This show is a very interactive show, and people have been writing to me, asking me to do a show post-election to see where we're at. And on the line right now, a favorite of ours from Real Clear Israel, Leslie Ann Sofo. Leslie, welcome back to the show. Hey, Ari, nice to, nice to talk to you again. Absolutely. So, BB wins, and what was interesting, in Israel, the night of the election, it was reported that he was neck and neck with Herzog, but it turned out not to be true. He had a pretty clear victory. What do you think about the media's coverage? It seemed like they did not want the prime minister to maintain his position, so tell us your thoughts about that. Well, yeah, um, the, the, from my understanding, and I do know this, that, that the intelligentsia, so to speak, and the, the media there is very, very left-wing, and in some cases extremely so, and they were they were just – ripping BB to pieces and they were even going after his wife and stuff like that and they very much did not want him to win and um were they were really trying to push the agenda and trying to make people think that their only option was to vote for Herzog and Livni and make make it sort of like a fait accompli, like it was already all done and done and over with, so you might as well just vote for them. And even the media here, um, you know, they, they slant the stories against him. Um, I noticed that, too. So uh, it, it, to see him actually come out ahead as much as he did was was really kind of a bit of, of, of a surprise for me. I did think it would be pretty close. But for him to come out ahead like that, I was I was surprised, but I was. I was happy, and I had been writing articles myself. Um, I wrote two articles for Politichix, um, and I wrote one for our United. Oh, no, I wrote two for United with Israel also, because I was trying to get the voice out there that that we in the West uh, we really, really need somebody like BB. And I understand. I've 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 lived in Israel for various lengths of time, and I understand how hard it can be to live there, you know, financially and stuff like that. But what I noticed, um, just from a person, you, you know, just from a, a, a caring uh, citizen in the West, we really don't have any strong leadership in the West. We well, we do have Stephen Harper here in Canada, but. I mean somebody who's really standing up and has the, you know, the gravitas to handle the situation with Obama and Iran and, and the different terror groups and things. I really believe, uh, believed and believe that we, not only does Israel need uh, Bibi, but the West does also. He's kind of like our Churchill right now at the moment. Yeah, that's the analogy people have been using, and we'll obviously talk about some of the ramifications of his victory, but I want to go back to the media's coverage because partly what I'm about, what I take prideful in is that we try to be honest here on Israel Sports and News Radio. I'm kind of shocked. You see different polls in the United States. Fox News might be a point or two off. You have CNN might be a point or two off of what really happens. But the Israeli poll system was really off. I mean, they said it was a tie. BB won yeah, that's what I heard. I heard that, yeah. Yeah, so I don't think that was such an accident. If it's a point or two off, you have miscalculation of error, no obviously survey or no way to take a poll is perfect. But to be that off, do you think that was intentional? As you said, you, you were talking about they wanted to say, Herzog's going to win anyways, be a part of it. So was this yeah. was this intentional where they're trying to manipulate the public and the Israeli people? Well, there's no no way to really know for sure, but it's it's a little bit too coincidental. You know, they do stuff like that here in Canada, too. The last time there was a, uh, uh, an election with Prime Minister Harper, they they did the same thing. They the, Our leftist media pushed it and pushed it to where it was going to, you know, be be the, the, the party, not him. And um, 
and it turned out that that it was him and then the polls were way off so they do the same kind of thing here i don't know it, it, it's actually doing all of us a big um disservice when we get treated like that where we're you know we're not even given the proper information so that we can make a, a, a an informed decision yeah i i find it i i just find it unconscionable yeah again i mean like i said you could see if people are human they make mistakes if there's an error i'm mm-hmm. fine with that i'm not yeah. fine if they're not doing their job and they're trying to manipulate the results and uh, but nevertheless it, it did not work the prime minister got his yeah. job back Interesting story that two days after the BB won, President Obama called him and said congratulations, and strange for a lot of reasons. One, the president did what he could to try to out BB from his job, sending people from the United States here, taxpayer money, a U.S. taxpayer money, to try to get him out of office. So why did Obama make that call? Did he make that call to say, well, I'm stuck with the guy, so I'll say something nice? Or was he trying to just maybe show a little grace? What do you think of the intentions of the president's phone call? Well, you know, he has to, he he would eventually have to make that call because it's not just him that he he is concerned about. I think if it was just him, if he was the, the emperor or the king, as he seems to want to be, he probably wouldn't have made the call. But because he's got... Uh, congressional people and senators probably on his back and also he's got um, you know Jewish lobby groups and stuff like that telling him that he, he needs to do the right thing and just have the uh, that's just it's protocol really and for somebody who's going on and on about protocol and then he doesn't even follow protocol himself is, is pretty hypocritical but uh I think he needed to open up the door of communication, but then he did the old Obama thing, which was, um, you know, I'm going to shake your hand with one hand and then slap you across the face with the other one, which was his little, you know, game was, well, I'm giving you a correct congratulation, but by the way, I'm going to be um, changing my tune at the UN and I'm going to be putting more pressure on you. And by the way, you also were, you know, racist about the Arabs, and and he just has to turn everything around and turn it into a bitter feud when it does not have to be. And this happens only with his um, with his allies, by the way, because he um, literally wants to bow and scrape to uh, a terror rogue regime like Iran. You know, so what's that all about? Well, and that's one of the things we had an episode on election night. What would the world and Israel be like if Herzog won one versus Bibi? And Bibi, uh, not perfect, has his flaws, but he acknowledges that Iran is a threat and that Iran has nuclear capabilities, that they're building nuclear capabilities. It, it doesn't look like Obama understands that. We, we are still trying to figure out what Obama thinks about Iran. Maybe you can shed some light for us. What is he thinking? Well, I'll tell you, Ari, the more and more I study this, and I and I have actually been studying this ever since the guy got into office, and I, I he is, he is pro-Islamic, bottom line. He's anti-West and pro-Islamic and pro-Jihad because of the way his, the way his uh, mindset goes. And, and he's in an interesting spot here, which I've been trying to figure this out, too. Okay. He has that Valerie Jarrett woman as his right-hand man, and she is from Iran. So from what it looks like, this has been planned, you know, on the back, in, on the back burner for quite some time to get this woman – and Obama and whoever else is around them to do this so-called normalization with Iran. Like, why? They have not given up any of their terror, you know, intentions or their they've not given up their desire to annihilate the little Satan in Israel or the big Satan America. You know, so this can only tell me that for whatever reason, 
Obama is pro-Iran, and he does want them to get the bomb. He does want them to gain hegemony in the region. Now, there's the little, there's the spanner in the works, which is ISIS. And I just heard something today. Oh, it was on Judge Janine on Fox. I was listening to it. And, okay, Iran is fighting uh, ISIS, but they're only fighting them because they're both fighting over the territory in Iraq. So we've got, I just wrote, wrote about this in my recent um, article for uh, United with Israel, which is we've got dueling caliphates here. Iran wants a caliphate, and so does uh, so does ISIS. You know, and so who's going to win? Well, is it going to be Iran because they're going to have the bomb? Like, I don't know. The the kind of the kind of uh, scenarios coming out of this Obama regime and all of this stuff going on in the Middle East. I mean, this is stuff that you get in the, like a Twilight Zone movie. I mean, who can even think this? This is like better than the best script anybody could ever even think of writing as as fiction. Do you know what I mean? So, well, who can really get into the, the guy's head? The only thing we can do is judge his actions, and his actions are scary, very scary. So, let's talk about this. You're talking about that he wants Iran to get the bomb. Why? If that's not good for anybody, including the United States, so why would he want that? Well, here it is. Ari, he actually believes that the West is bad, that the U.S. is bad, that this has all been a big colonial, uh, you know, um, thing by the West. And and, uh, and if we – see, he doesn't see Iran as a terror state, or he does not do uh, moral – uh, he doesn't do moral clarity. He doesn't do, oh, well, the, the, this is, this side is good and this side is bad. And okay, granted, both, you know, the West and the, these Islamic regimes have their good and bad points, but the West tries to live by, um, the rules of, uh, the Judeo-Christian, um, Principles, for want of a word, but it, it, they, the it, it, Islamic regimes go by Sharia, and Sharia law has it, it's the complete antithesis of Judeo-Christian ethics and values. They actually believe in lying to somebody, you know, to lying to the West. It's called takia, and they can get what they want if they just lie. So Obama has this has this kind of mindset that. He, he, he deals in moral relativism. Okay, the West and the Iranians and the, all these other ones are all on, on the same, uh, page. And actually, he does something a bit weird, which is he, he thinks the West is, if he's gonna judge one or the other, he'll judge that the West is bad and that the, uh, Iranian regime is good. And that they've just been hard done by, and if they just get some jobs, and if their young people just have a nice little spring break, it'll all be good. You know, just jump on the back of his unicorn, go for a ride, uh, it'll all be good. And it's, it's insane. And so, what sane person can understand why Obama would want them to have the bomb? Uh, I, I, my brain can't even go there. I don't, I don't really know, but all I can say is from his actions, that's what he wants. And for whatever the reasons are, um, it's putting all of us in, in, in danger. All of us. Um, and I honestly don't know. And I, see, I put in my article too. I said that BB is our firewall against Iran and Obama. And I think that's the case. Like, at this point, all we can do is just try to thwart the guy as much as possible, like, through, uh, you know, uh, getting Congress to, 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 to do, put things through, to put measures in his way to stop him, you know, um, 
get BB to stand up and say things and get get him, you know, t- talking to the P five plus one countries and get them to start putting the kibosh and stuff. Like, all we can do is try to thwart this guy for the next two years so that he the damage that he does is is diminished. Again, this is the Messiah Hour. You're listening to Israel Sports at NewsRadio.com. You can email us either the Messiah Hour at gmail.com that goes with this show or the station in general, Israel Sports at NewsRadio.com. And our guests from Real Clear Israel, Leslie Ann Stoffel. So, Leslie, we were talking about different reasons why perhaps uh, President Obama would want Iran to get the bomb, although it doesn't make a lot of sense. There are only approximately two years left in the in the president's term, if you will, it's really, I guess, a year and a half to be more accurate, a L- little less. Actually, if you go by the inauguration date, it's about two years. So in yeah. that time, can we somehow buy time? What, what can be done to prevent Iran from getting the nuke in these two years? And then do we hope we'll have a better president in 2016 yeah, election when they take over 2017? Well, I was thinking about that too because I, I'm I'm so concerned about this, and, and like I said, I was thinking, okay, well, you could get the you could get Congress to start putting things in place and saying, you know, anything that is being talked about in in any deal with them, it has to go through us, and we have to vote on it, and then he can also BB can talk to the P five plus one countries and get them on board and say, look, you know. Here's what's really going on. I think France did something like that today. They said that um, they weren't happy with what was happening in this deal, and they wanted some kind of guarantees and uh, whatever. So that's what I think he'll, he'll have to do, is he'll have to go behind Obama's back into ev- on uh, in every level that he can and try to just all we can do is thwart the guy all we can do is just try to put roadblocks in his way um and 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 just keep the damage to a minimum um yeah that's really all i can think of at at this you know at this time and i have been putting some thought into that but that's all i can think of right now what we can do because we are really on the verge here. I don't know if you've ever watched it, Ari. There's a really good video on um, YouTube, and it, it's about an hour long. It's done by the BBC, and it shows the entire um, scenario of when Chamberlain was meeting uh, Hitler in Munich. And I'm telling you, it is chilling, and it is it, it's absolutely startling the the uh, parallels to what we're living with now um with Obama and Kerry practically begging these begging the Iranians for a deal and the more they beg the worse it gets like and that's exactly what Chamberlain did with uh Hitler and the more Hitler demanded the more he got and the bottom line is as we all know appeasement does not work Appeasement emboldens the enemy, and it's the absolute worst thing you can do. And people like Obama and Kerry, like, they just have mush brains from moral relativism, and they just do not pay attention to history, and that's the worst thing you can do. Indeed, and one of the things that should be noted is the concept of the Middle Eastern culture when – they tend to respect force. They tend to respect might. They look as might is right. There's not a Western type of mindset. And in the Western world, there are deals, there are negotiations, there are give and take because the West tends to value life more. The West has a better yeah. life. They want to yeah. live. So they're willing to negotiate for the sake of peace. But in certain parts yeah. of the Middle East, they don't want to live, so they're not really interested in negotiation. Again, yeah. indeed. And again, exactly. This is the Messiah Hour here on Israel Sports and News Radio.com. You can email me at MessiahHourGmail.com or you can email the station at Israel Sports and Radio, uh, excuse me, Israel Sports and News Radio.com. Now, let's talk about an interesting angle of that speech 
that Bibi gave at Congress. We spoke before the speech occurred. I haven't got your thoughts since the speech. At the end of the day, did that speech win the election for the prime minister, and how did the Western world accept Bibi's speech to the Congress about three weeks ago? I, I try to look at all of the angles. But I'm filtering things through my perspective, which is I, I come from a conservative perspective. But I can tell you that people were absolutely rooting and cheering for BB. Now you've got your, you know, your extreme left wingers and who, of course, would hate anything and everything he does. But like just people on the street. I mean, even my my dear old dad, you know, he he thought it was fantastic. And um, I think uh, the average person on the street is not stupid, and they can see exactly what's going on. And they actually felt and could see and hear that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is a a tremendous leader. He came out with strength and power, and he made sense, and people respond to that. We are so, so lacking that in, in, in our world today. I mean, look at the much brain leaders we have now, and people respond so positively to somebody who does what BB did, and I, I'm really, I'm so proud of him, and I, like I say, and you say it too. We know he's got his faults, but hey, at this point in time, we need his strength. And um, I really appreciate him for that. Um, and you know, a lot of pe- and a lot of people do. Just your basic person on the street, they they appreciate him. Now, there was an interesting incident in which there was some boycott of the prime minister's speech, parts of the Democratic Party caucus because of the whole protocol situation where President Obama didn't want him to speak in the Congress, but then Bibi did anyways, and the Republicans wanted him to speak. Give us some more information about that. It was a bit confusing to understand all the nuances and details. So tell us if there was legitimately a boycott from any part of the Democratic Party. You know, I don't think, from what I could gather at the end, um, there were some that didn't go. Well, of course, uh, Kerry and Obama and Biden, none of them went. Um, and there were some from the Democratic Party that didn't go. But from what I heard, uh, that, um, speech was, it was like, it was like a rock star. You know, people wanted tickets to see that. So really, that boycotting thing, it, it really didn't work. It, it didn't work at all. And and even um oh what's that woman's name now gosh it's gone because it's so early for me here I can't remember. uh Pelosi Pelosi she pulled the stunt did you see that Ari where she um when everybody would stand up to clap she would stand up and turn her back to him wow I did not see that but thank you for sharing yeah. with us wow it was completely disgusting and um uh, yeah so she was doing that she was pulling all kinds of stunts like that but. In the end, I'll tell you, when somebody like Phoebe stands up and tells people the truth and says says it like it is, they appreciate and respect that a lot more than what than the antics and craziness that uh, Pelosi and other ones were trying to pull off there. Wow. Um, I don't really heard anything like that. Do you recall any time, have you covered politics for a long time, that – someone would go to the speech, be in the audience, but turn their back when the other people were clapping. It sounds pretty immature. Kind of shocked that yeah. Pelosi did it. Has anyone else done anything like that? I've never heard of anything like that being done before. But, you know, Ari, at this point in time, the Obama so-called Obama administration is the most um, uh, immature – and uh, petulant presidential administration I've ever seen in my life. And I've been a news junkie all my life, watching news and, and politics. And, and uh, in Canada, we're always, you know, looking at the, at the presidents and what's going on there. 
in the U.S., and I've never seen anything this ridiculous in my life. Because what a real president would have done would say, well, you know, there might have been some kind of a mix-up there, but, hey, I'm going to go, and then after Benjamin, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu would have uh, said his speech, a real president would have stood up and said, well, I don't agree, and here are my points. This is what happens in the real grown-up world, but all bets are off, uh, Ari, with Obama. It's just like a free-for-all. It's like, you know, um, it's, 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 it's just run amok, like all this, um, insanity and, and, and just making up their own rules and, and I've never seen anything like it in my life. Really, I haven't. Again, this is the Messiah Hour here on Israel Sports and News Radio dot com. Of course, you can email me Messiah Hour Gmail dot com, or you can email the station at Israel Sports and News Radio dot com. Our guest from Real Clear Israel, Leslie and Stoffel. So, Leslie, how do you think President? Excuse me. How do you think Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will now handle his situation? Because there was talk that he is going to try to make more of a right wing candidate a cabinet, excuse me, have the left somewhat out of the government. Do you think he will maintain his word? Because he's actually done quite a bit of left-leaning things so far in his second run as prime minister. He's released thousands of terrorists. He has given yeah, up parts, yeah. of, parts of Hebron. He's worked with Levy. Yeah. Do you think he will be more right-wing this time around? Well, it's really hard to say, Ari, because um, I know that um, President Rivlin has started uh, with the meetings of the different parties today, and it goes on for another couple of days, and then they'll figure out, you know, who can work with who and all this sort of stuff, but it, it's really hard to say because you don't know, you know, he's got to offer top jobs to people and try to work deals and this kind of stuff. I'm hoping personally that... um He'll have a strong right-leaning government. Um, and then, of course, we do want our left-leaning friends to have some kind of a voice. I, I'm not that type of person that wants to kick everybody out who doesn't agree with me at all. I'm not that way at all. But um, when it comes to the seriousness of what Israel's facing right now, which is that, just as the prime minister said, he, he, you know, he's very concerned that if any territory was given over to the uh, so-called Arabs, who call them the, the so-called Palestinians, the Arabs that call themselves Palestinians, he would be very worried that something like an ISIS would come in and take over that territory, or more Hamas and ISIS, because the Fatah is is very very weak, and um, that's another thing. Um, Mahmoud Abbas is going into like his 10th or 11th year of a four year term and Obama is crying and whining about how Israel doesn't have a, isn't a democracy and you know, all kinds of people, Arabs and everybody else voted in that election. I don't know. It's just mind boggling the stuff that he comes up with. But anyway, um, and, and also with the Iranian, you know, threat and then plus, the Iranian terror proxies that surround, like, I mean, I, I hate, I'm always seem to be the bearer of bad news and I hate to do that. But um, what I'm saying all that to say this is, is that I'm hoping against hope that he'll have strong thinking, clear thinking leaders that preferably would be right leaning. That's what I, I would imagine, you know, it, appears like the left wants to give away and be, you know, uh, give away land and all that sort of stuff. So I'm hoping that he'll have a, a right-leaning government that'll be strong in all those areas. And I, I'd also, I, that's a huge, huge order. And then he, you know, the, the population, the citizens also want him to look at the social issues of, you know, um, the health health care things and and schooling and and the cost of things and the cost of housing and stuff like that. So it's it's just massive. But I I hope against hope that he gets the right people in there to help him 
with this really difficult job he's got ahead of him. Yeah, and I should maintain a, a major portion of the terrorists BB release were in the Gilachili deal in September 2011, and although in hindsight perhaps that deal was not a good one because 50 percent of those terrorists have been rearrested for crimes, I understand yeah. the I understand the emotion at the time because everyone wanted Gilad back and they were very happy he was alive and people thought do what you can to get it back. So I wouldn't fault the prime minister so much at that time, but he has done anything that was certainly questionable. Hopefully he will do better things this time around. Let's, yeah. let's talk about, um, you know, you, you mentioned being there about news. You are just telling it like it is. We appreciate that here. On the program. But let's talk about something maybe a little more positive. Uh, we were chatting a little bit about this. I saw this on your Facebook. Apparently, Roseanne from the Roseanne show retweeted something that you did a story on. Oh, oh yeah. Ari, this is so funny. I see she um has written for us at United with Israel also and she and so and and our one of our social media guys, he interacts with her on, on our um Twitter page and stuff like that sometimes. So I I tweeted my article, the last one I did, it was called, it was called The World Needs Phoebe. And I, I mentioned her, so she retweeted it. And then I did it again later and she retweeted it again. And some woman came on and said something really rude. So Roseanne said something really funny back to her to put her in her place. It was really funny. And then Roseanne um, actually followed me. On Twitter, and I was beside myself. I was so excited. It was so funny, and um, yeah. So she's really, she's really pro-Israel now. And I know there's been a lot of people working, like uh, t- uh, chatting with her and tweeting with her over the last couple of years or few years to to get her that way. To, you know, to help her to know what's really going on. And so yeah, she's she's really pro-Israel now. So that was my one little thrilling thing that happened over in the week. <laughs> All right, indeed. So uh, that was something pretty, I thought, pretty cool. You know, it's good to see that uh, you have the celebrities that are still involved, a very prominent show in the 90s, the Roseanne yeah. show. So that, that was good. All right, well, uh, yeah. we took a break of, of kind of something happiness. I have to go back to a sad story because I want people to, to know about it. Uh, although this can, there's something that can be done, and the reason why I want to bring up the story is, is kind of what needs to be done. We can talk about it. There was a, a, a synagogue attack in London. Now, this show is being recorded on Sunday, March 22nd. This happened in the nighttime of March 21st in London. There's video all over YouTube going viral of people attacking a synagogue in London. A pretty scary sight. I know you saw the video as well. What were your initial thoughts of it? Yeah, I, I was I was quite scared. I was scared for the people inside and um very concerned about this. Um well it didn't look like those those guys were were Muslim as we talked about. It looks like they were, you know, thugs that are doing this anti Jewish thing and whatever. But the bigger the bigger picture for me, which is 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 getting scary and somebody brought this up too can't remember who it was now shoot somebody brought it up on my on my facebook today about uh how with obama's you know every time he goes against israel and against bb it's it's hard to explain but it 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 just gives the green light for throws gasoline on the fire for the for the anti-jewish crowd and i think it starts it's starting to become sort of acceptable and you know kind of cool to be anti an anti-semite and anti-israel and all that kind of stuff now i think it's it, it's it's just growing like a plague all over the world and and these brash attacks are getting more and more and more and I, i'm getting i'm i'm alarmed by it frankly i really am because one of these times somebody's you know they're going to charge in there and there really will be somebody hurt there remember a, a little while back there was a young guy who was being um i think 
the chase with a knife or something at Chabad in Brooklyn. Like, yeah, it's, that's right. Yeah. It's, it's getting really, really, it is getting alarming. And, and, there I, was, and there was a, a synagogue attack at a bar in Mitzvah where there was a brave security guard right. that he died. And had he not <laughs> died, there would have been perhaps 50 or more casualties. I mean, he was a total, yeah. absolute hero. So it's, it's scary yeah. times. Yeah, it definitely is. And on that, I, I have no idea what we can do about that. It just nobody seems to be really addressing it. And, you know, we don't have a president. Standing up and saying, you know, this is not acceptable and blah, 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 and it needs to stop. And, you know, even I don't even hear Prime Minister Harper saying anything unless he has and I didn't see it or hear it. But it, it's not being uh, – they're not putting the kibosh on it and doing anything about it as far as I can tell. What's also strange is when the president comes out, and talks about it, he tries to make it sound like a non-Jewish thing, like the incident in France, the terror attack at the kosher server market. He called it random and yeah. didn't refer to them as Jews, referred to them as folks, and tried to say it wasn't exactly an act of terrorism. And I don't know if that's incompetence or he wants to try to insult people, but that's that would certainly insult my intelligence if, uh, if that was the intention, mission accomplished there. What about, perhaps, is it time, and we had Jerusalem Jane Keel come on the program. She's from Denmark. She, she's not Jewish, but she thought it was time for the Jews of Denmark to leave and come to Israel. Would you say, when we have a lot of listeners all over the world, including Great Britain, is it time for the Jews of Great Britain to leave and come to Israel? Would you see an attack like that and think that's a sign it's, it's time to come home? Well, <laughs> I, I personally, I, I don't like to stand somewhere and tell everybody what to do. But I would say, from what I'm seeing, that uh, I, I'm. What I would say is, is that these places are danger, are getting dangerous, and it's going to even, it's going to get worse. And I would definitely be considering making my move to Israel. That's what I think. I would be doing if I was them, for sure. All right, and uh, before we have Leslie promote her uh, everything she does, she does a lot of great work for uh, the people of Israel, the state of Israel. Um, I do want to say it, just a very this is one of the saddest stories I've ever heard, but I bring it up because I just want to bring attention. If you haven't heard, uh, there was uh, seven children that died in a fire in Brooklyn. It was an accident. Oh, it was, it was not. Yeah, it was not an act of terrorism. Uh, total accident. Um, it's the worst uh, fire as, as far as casualties since 2007. I just I, and I have been thinking about this all day, been very bothered. I'm very thankful I have the radio to at least have some outlet. But everyone out there, you keep an eye out. There's going to be different charities set up to try to try to help the family. Family's going to have to try to go on uh, and continue. And there's going to be different ways to help them, even if it's not financially. And everyone can keep an eye on that. We'll try to update people. There, it just happened last. It happened over Shabbat actually. So we're going to try to keep everyone posted if they can uh, make a donation or any type of help. We, I don't know of anything right now, but hopefully we'll be up to date. So everyone, just keep an eye on that. It's going to be all over uh, social media and Facebook anyway. But but as a reminder, it's uh, it's something that they need help, something that needs to be done. Uh, yeah. Now, with that said, again, I want to thank you for coming on the program very much so because uh, you do a lot of great work. Tell everyone where they can read more about Real Clear Israel. I know you also write in different publications, so tell everyone about that. Yeah, well, if they go to my website, which is therealclearisrael.org, then all of my writing under our articles, blogs, and media is there. All of my social networking buttons, they can contact me there, are there. And also, um, I work for United with Israel unitedwithisrael.org, and we're doing right now our Pesach, partnering with us uh, for with, for the IDF to buy um, packages, uh, Passover packages for the IDF. So that's kind of the campaign we've got going right now if anybody wants to be involved with that and thank the, the soldiers. Um, but yeah, so that's about it. They can just find me at therealclearisrael.org. Um, where I'm at. Okay, great. And in a few minutes of the program, I wanted to thank Leslie for coming on because this is the first episode of 
my new site, which is israelsportsandnewsradio.com. And if you're listening to this program um, and you're not listening on the website and you go to the website, it may not be completely set up. We're still in the stages of setting that up, so bear with us. We're still working on all that. But you can always find our shows on YouTube. If you type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis, you'll see all our recent episodes that we put up. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any stories you want me to cover in the future or anyone you want me to interview, email me beside our gmail.com. This show was done because we had fans and listeners write and say, hey, all right, give us some post-election news. And I thought there's really no one better than Leslie to come on to do that. So, Leslie, thank you for being on this first episode of IsraelSportsNewsRadio.com. Oh, thank you, Ari. It's always a pleasure. Indeed. And, of course, you can find our work on Real Clear Israel. Of course, email us one more time, the site, ourgmail.com. Leslie, thank you so much. Be well. We'll speak with you soon. Okay. Be well, Ari.